When we moved here in the winter of 04, the area directly behind me had been used to board horses, and the horses were allowed to the creek, which is about 30 yards this way, so you can imagine plant growth was inhibited. And David, my husband, had referred to riparian buffers when we lived in Wisconsin. He was, and still is, completely enamored with native plant species. And he explained the stretches of land which border the waterways and creeks had been given a special designation because of the importance to the health of those waterways and sustenance of those ecosystems in and around the buffer. The following year, David set out to remanage the pasture. Now that included fencing off this lower area from the animals, nursing along those plant species which were already here, and selectively ridding the area of invasive ones. I thought it'd be nice to take a look at some of the plant species that now occupy the riparian buffer along our two creeks. And be warned, many people call these weeds. You be the judge. Oh, there's that honeybee. So everyone, this is David. David's going to show us some of the species here in this area and then we'll move along. So tell me again what this one is. I know, but it's an interview, so just play along, okay? So tell everyone what this one is. All right. This one is a uh, tall evening primrose. It grows on uh, in waste wayside areas along roads, uh, but it also does well in, in wet areas like we have here along the, the creek or the riparian buffer, as Tracy as Tracy mentioned. Um, this species here is called golden glow or cut edge cone flower or, or a tall cone flower. Uh, it can grow up to eight feet tall. Uh, it thrives in wet areas. It's relatively good for you know pollinators. Uh, not as not as uh, good as some of the other species we have here, but it's very, very uh, pretty species to have uh, in the pasture or the riparian buffer. This is another uh, tremendous species that we have uh, quite a bit here uh, along the both both of the creeks. This is a spotted Joe pie weed. It can grow, you know, to nine or ten feet tall in, in some cases. It's a, a tremendous magnet for uh, you know pollinators, uh, particularly butterflies. Uh, tiger swallowtails are particularly fond of it. Uh, so are black swallowtails. Um, and we have quite a bit of it uh, here uh, along our uh, two buffers, buffer zones. Uh, it grows by rhizomes, so you'll see that it tends to be growing bunches. It also grows by seed. Uh, it's a very popular plant also with um, uh, native gardeners as well. Oh, David, tell them about the multiflora rose. Okay, uh, multiflora rose is an invasive species, and if left unchecked, it can take totally take over an area. Uh, there's many uh, old farm fields in the Berks County area, Chester County area, Montgomery County area that are completely overtaken by multiflora rose. If you can, you can see that uh, if 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 you let this uh, grow and expand, that uh, nothing grows underneath it. It chokes everything out. Um, so this has to be removed in order for other species like the golden glow, the Joe Pie weed, the griminy, other uh, really valuable native species to take hold and thrive. Um, a caveat to this is that uh, even though multiflora rose is, multiflora rose is not a very nice plant, uh, our goats love it. So um, I've had friends that uh, ha have kept their properties totally devoid of multiflora rose, poison ivy, and other what we consider noxious weeds and, and or invasive species uh, because the goats really thrive on it. So. All right, so Babe, this is the agrimony you were telling me about last night, right? Yeah, yeah. Agrimony is another species in the last two or three years that has, has taken over, uh, you know, quite a quite a section of our buffers. Uh, agrimony, for for centuries and centuries, probably millennium, has been a uh, pretty valuable medicinal, um, and it's uh, uh, sort of has been known at different times as a cure-all. Uh, it's also a good natural dye. Uh, it's not palatable, so if livestock was in the area, livestock is not very fond of agrimony. Has small yellow flowers. Uh, doesn't have as many pollinators as some of the other species that uh, that we have talked about and will talk about. Uh, but it's a, it's a nice addition to the buffer here. Uh, it's good for enhancing the water quality of the streams. If we look down here, this is another plant that's related. It's in the mint family. It's called water whorehound. Um, has a square stem, just like all mints do. It's aromatic, probably not quite as aromatic as a, you know, um, peppermint, spearmint, or uh, or uh, catnip, but has nice small white flowers. Um, and it's a pretty good low-growing addition to you know the riparian buffer. 
Okay, many species have a variety of common names. For example, this can be called either grass leaf or lance leaf goldenrod. It's one of many goldenrod species that we have out here along the uh, riparian buffer. It's a great attractor for a variety of insects, honeybees, uh, other bees and wasps, and some uh, butterflies, not as many butterflies as some of the other species. Uh, one of the species that is good for butterflies though is this ironweed here, which is a, a brilliant pinkish purple flower, a great attractor to pollinators. Okay, here's a multiflora rose that I had cut back earlier in the spring. If, if you can look down here, you see that the whole area is pretty much devoid of vegetation because of the growth habit of the large multiflora rose. After cutting it back though, you can see that other species are you know, starting to grow, particularly here, the swamp milkweed, which is a really nice, desirable plant and pollinator. All right, so tell us about the swamp milkweed. Okay, so swamp, there's the common milkweed that everyone's pretty, pretty much familiar with. Uh, this is another milkweed species here. This is called swamp milkweed. It's aromatic, but not quite as aromatic as, um, as the common milkweed. Uh, it has a bushy growth habit. Uh, it's very good for pollinators. Uh, as you can see, there's some honeybees on it right now. On a sunny day, you'll find butterflies on here, particularly monarchs, because monarch butterflies do like uh, milkweed species. Um, over here, we have bone set. Uh, bone set, long been known as a medicinal, has a great uh, white flower that blooms in July and August. Uh, it, it derived its name, they say, from what I could ascertain from various sources, uh, bone set because the leaves sort of co-join at the stem. So old pra health practitioners thought since the leaves joined together that it would help set bones, hence the name bone set. So this is also a very good uh, species for pollinators, not quite as uh, prolific or as, as good as uh, Joe Pye weed and ironweed though. So I use this for the mint jelly that I made about a month ago. Okay, yeah, cat, catnip, uh, I, I would say if I had, had to pick one species that had the most diverse number of, of uh, insects and butterflies, it would be the, the catnip. On an average sunny day that's above 80 degrees, you know, we'll see sometimes, you know, five or more species of butterflies uh, just loaded with honeybees. You actually hear the plant humming. Um, it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous pollinator. It really has grown and grows in pretty thick, dense patches. So since it grows in thick, dense patches, it keeps other uh, weeds or non-desirable species out of the mix. So I made catnip jelly? Good. <laughs> in the Midwest, this little slice of land or a uh, fragmented ecosystem would be known as a, a wet prairie remnant. At one, at one point in the tall grass prairies, uh, which dominated that part of, of, uh, of the United States, uh, there's a, quite a wide variety uh, of diverse uh, plant species. Uh, here we have uh, ironweed, which proliferates in the area, a lot of joe pie weed, a lot of bone set, uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous, what I would call, wet prairie remnant. Um, many of these species are highly sought after. Um, uh, on, on some organizations will sell, you know, plant seeds like Joe Pye weed and iron weed in excess of three or four hundred dollars a pound. Plants are quite expensive. It's a, it's a desirable uh, plant community to establish in many parts of the uh, United States, particularly the Midwest. <laughs>